Boozy Spirits live here at Dread River. Uh, very excited about today. We already took a tour of the workings. <laughs> so uh, introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your role here. Um, my name is Keegan Rawls. I am the sales director uh, for Dread River. I have been working here um, full time since last February, so almost a year now. Um, and I do all um, off and on site tastings um, for bars, restaurants, hotels, anybody who's interested in wanting to carry our products. And then I also do a lot of off site events for those places as well. So um, exposing our brand um, and our products to the world and trying to collaborate with people. Come on in. <laughs> I'm John Kubelik. I'm one of the founders. Uh, started this business back in, geez, I don't know, 2017 or so. Uh, so I've been working here ever since kind of uh, between sales and marketing. That's kind of what I focus on now. Um, let Joshua handle the distilling uh, <laughs> portion of the business, but got into this a little while ago to try to bring some, some fresh energy to Birmingham, which is uh, what I think we achieved a little bit here. And um, yeah, we're in the intro phase, so welcome. Josh. All right, yeah, that's good to be here. Yeah. Who are you and what do you do here? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm Joshua. Uh, I, people just call me. You can just call me the Juice Man. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll go. With <laughs> Nobody has ever called me that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm Joshua. Uh, people call me the Juice Man. So, nice. <laughs> no one or calls the, me the Juice Man. Guys. <laughs> hey, we're calling you Juice Man. I'm today. Josh. Sorry, yeah, I'm the Juice, juice Man. Josh. Josh. <laughs> juice man Josh. Yeah. No, jokes aside, I make all the, the liquor for Dread River Distillery. So Very that's cool. why I'm here. That's what I do. I feel like I'm at my house while it's Dread River on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what it's like. You and me both. Yeah, seriously. Hi. So, so, what, so we, I guess, yeah, I'll kind of talk you through a little bit of this. So we started this, uh, the idea back in either 2016 or 17, it's hard to remember. Uh, and then spent about two years trying to figure out how actually to do this. So I worked in the film industry and then in the live event business for, for a while and had no real experience in the distilling industry whatsoever. And my business partner, Jeff Dugas, is a surgeon at Andrews Sports Medicine. And so he also, he has a chemical engineering background but never really had any uh, business experience in the distilling industry. So we were pretty fresh to this and just thought that Birmingham had been experiencing kind of a renaissance over the last 10 years or so where lots of new blood coming down in downtown Birmingham, the brewery scene had uh, blown up, the restaurant scene had always been here, but um, we thought that this was the next kind of logical evolution to that craft co cocktail culture, which kind of was springing up in Birmingham a little bit, um, which, you know, 10 years prior to that would have been unheard of to have a, a $12 cocktail in Birmingham, you know, you would have been laughed at and that's a commonplace yeah. thing now. So just kind of goes to show how much has changed here. Um, and we thought that a, a distillery was kind of the logical next progression in that time frame. So um, was a white space opportunity and, and we got back and started kind of looking into where that might make sense anywhere around Birmingham. And we kind of decided we wanted to be downtown in the part of that cultural uh, renaissance that was happening. and. Looked at several different uh, buildings. This was by far the largest building that we looked at. Um, and so naturally we chose that one and have grown into it over the last couple of years. We finally finished construction in the back first because we have to manufacture all the alcohol that we serve here. So this is effectively a tasting room where you're sitting now. So we can only serve these spirits, which is partially why we have so many. So we can offer a wide variety um, and we make our own beer too, uh, which we, can't serve other people's beer, unfortunately. Um, and so that kind of necessitated we start that side of the business first and then bring this along after. And so we got this open in uh, August of 26, uh, 2019, excuse me, and four months later shut down for the next year and a half, two years for COVID. So uh, <laughs> whereupon we got in the hand sanitizer manufacturing business and that was an exciting uh, collaborative pivot with the city of Birmingham. So uh, good times there, but now we're kind of back where I think we we should have been if COVID had never happened. The beginning of last year, uh, I'm sorry, beginning of 22 was really where I felt like we were kind of getting our feet back on the ground. That middle period was just so up and down. It was hard to really understand what any of the numbers meant or anything like that, especially for a new business. So we're lucky to have survived COVID. That wasn't easy, but 
kind of got back up and running and do a lot of events in this space, I have nightly clientele, obviously, food and drinks, uh, come hang out here. Um, and then we've, yes, we do mixology classes, tours and tasting. So a lot of fun stuff that you can come here to do, but also the you know main thrust of our business is getting these products out to bars and restaurants across the state. We're in Mississippi now. We moved into Tennessee last August. So we're kind of growing concentrically uh, over time now that we've got our feet on the ground a little bit more. Awesome, very cool. One thing I got out of that, Matt, was he used to work in the film industry. I'm back there with my fucking iPhone doing that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm, iPhone cameras have come a long way now. I'm not yeah, on my horse about that at all. So you guys have good equipment. I, I support that. So uh, Well, I love the decor in here. I mean, y'all did an awesome job as far as decorating and creating the vibe that I'm sure you Thank wanted you. to. That was all Keegan. She yeah, yeah I <laughs> spent a lot of hours thinking about the color of the couch that you're sitting on. Uh, <laughs> no. You have to do an awesome job. <laughs> Was Truth be told, a lot of thought did go into yeah. the color of oh, the yeah. couches and the floors and the wall. Yeah. I mean, uh, hours and hours and hours of my life that uh, I did not think was going to be spent on the interior design. But, but, it, but it makes it and it flows better. Yeah. yeah. It does. Well, yeah. and that was part of really the all joking aside as far as that goes, we wanted to do something that was different for Birmingham. Mm -hmm. So obviously the distillery portion hadn't really been done. So naturally that was going to be different. Yeah. But also as we developed this as a, you know, the front of the house tasting room portion of this business, it was, we wanted people to walk in here and say, you know, I don't feel like I'm in Birmingham when I come mm -hmm. here. I feel like it's a different place. Yeah. I could be you yeah. know, wherever and somewhere else. Not that that's necessarily bad for here. It was just the tried and true things in Birmingham were mm -hmm. tried and true for a reason. So if we're going to do something like this, we're going to do it a little bit outside of the norm and, and create a, a cool new space. So I think we did achieve that. Um, it's got a bigger city feel. Yeah. It's new yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it deserves Birmingham's growth deserves more places like that who, you know, say, we're not going to just do what has happened here for the last 20 years. We're growing, which requires people to step outside of sort of what that uh, traditional path is. And I think we were able to do that and, and kind of take the risk of saying, you know, yeah, this isn't what everybody else does, but that's precisely why we're going to do it. I mean, honestly, too, like you got to appreciate good textures. Yeah. You know, yeah. I like having different textures and different materials floating around and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's not, yeah. it's not bland looking. Floats. Yeah. I remember there's one place I walked into in Portland and it was, uh, it was like, it's called the Doug Fur, and it was like a log cabin kind of a feel. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but one side was like real full logs. The other side was fake logs that were, that were, uh, like, like this material. Yeah. And I just love that, man. You're walking yeah. around and you can just kind of touch the walls and just, <laughs> You got to embrace the inner child sometimes, you know? Yeah. They sell mushrooms there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, he took those before he went. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that wall wasn't yeah. fuzzy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it was all. <laughs> yeah. So how'd you get brought in, Josh? Uh, they found me online. Um, so I, I actually found them online. Craigslist? Uh, yeah, yeah. Craigslist type of scenario. Craigslist yeah. for distillers, yeah. essentially. I'm a, I'm a part of ADI. It's an American Distiller or Institute. So I saw a posting for Dread River. I, I never heard of Dread River, but it said Birmingham, Alabama. I got family in Birmingham. So um, I know I had to reach out and see what the deal was. And it turns out we were like a symbiotic kind of a interview and relationship. And, and I just kind of decided to pack up the kids and the family and move on down, you know? Where'd you move from? Uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Uh, so kind of east, east side of Pennsylvania, about 15 minutes from Jersey you know, 45 from Philly. So that's pretty big change there. down there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, weather for sure, you know, but the people are, I think way nicer in the South. <laughs> Ironically, I have family where Josh came from and he has family here. So that's kind of a weird yeah. little turnabout. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely the easiest, uh, hardest move I ever made, yeah. you know, like yeah. it's so far away and stuff like that. So it made it hard, but as far as like transitioning into a great company, this was, I mean, everything is smooth as butter, you know, it's like a kid in a candy store just, <laughs> and go back there and play with stuff. And oh yeah, exactly. Slightly yeah. larger operation. Than yeah, you yeah. Before, the the so. spot still is, I'd, I'd say, three times the size of the one I'm used to running. Really? Yeah. So. And don't we have the largest pot still in the state of Alabama? Yeah, we do. Until uh, and there's a another distillery coming. Clyde May might have one that's a little bigger yeah. than ours. I'm not right. sure what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that was part Explain of it. the thing for us too. We, as Josh can attest, we did not buy equipment. Uh, commensurate with our size of experience and you know where yeah. we started we decided we we're gonna buy this to grow into it yeah. and you know kind of 
really spent some yeah. some money and some time researching that and so we have a distillery that will we are continuing to grow into and will for quite mm -hmm. a long time because our equipment uh will allow us to do that so yeah, pocketbook yeah. probably wasn't happy at the time yeah, but. No, <laughs> yeah. i i still occasionally walk back there and am a little chap that you know we got a lot of money tied up back here so we <laughs> yeah. better run that damn stuff that's right <laughs> yeah that's right the same thing we did with the podcast though so, yeah like, me and him i had the idea to start the podcast instead of just getting like a little dinky toilet with tj maxx we saw one mm -hmm. or something somebody <laughs> sent him like he owns a music store so we just went all out yeah yeah we got did the right studio way has four mics like four cameras got a nice. bar set up we got this mobile kit like oh, just went the yeah, whole way awesome. dress for the job you want not yeah. the job you have that's right that's right yeah. yeah i mean we can we can afford to grow into bigger shoes we won't stress at all back there you yeah. know yeah. yeah we can fill any order right now we got a strong team coming back there and everyone's kind of everyone's kind of green but i think in a couple months we'll just be like powerhouse you know sure, so. nice. tell us a little bit about the lineup it's uh pretty impressive yeah, you got a lot going on here, um, and Josh can probably speak to the specifics a little bit more than I can. But basically, as I said, we kind of started uh, with the idea of being able to have a full service, so to speak, bar. Um, you know, we can't sell Campari, we can't sell Aperol, Chartreuse, uh, Budweiser, Tito's, things like that. So even to make cocktails, martinis, you know, even basic cocktails, you want a Manhattan. You know, we we can't buy vermouth so we have to create yeah. that same cocktail experience just with things that we manufacture so the one nice thing about that is we'll take you know 190 proof uh what we use to make vodka and we can kind of macerate different flavors out of different things and create you know your kalua adjacent type spirit if we wanted to some type of coffee liqueur so all the cocktails up here are very bespoke but that kind of forced us to say like okay if we want to go down this direction we have to create that product so it kind of led to having a more full line whiskey as you can probably tell is our our focus bourbon specifically but even at the beginning you know we turned the still on for the first time and you know two, we needed ended up being three years until we were able to release a product so you know we had to have something in that interim time to continue operating the business and if you're going to come here and have an event and you can only have booze and it can only be our booze we better figure out a way to you know make it competitive so um, that sort of explains the full line, but we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on that. And again, Keegan can talk about that. I think we've mm -hmm. dialed in a lot of these spirits over time, um, just listening to people and saying, you know, here's how we can make improvements to this. The gin is very botanical and, and herbal rather than quite so juniper forward. The agave, I know you have experience mm -hmm. with, you can, you know, speak to that. And then we try to get creative on the, the whiskey process to do some different things. We finish products uh, in different barrels. so. Kind of a lot of, of different things going on, but these guys can also tell you how they feel about it. Not at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> well, Take um, it away, yeah, no, I, uh, we obviously have, like John was saying, a wide portfolio of products here from vodka gin, rum, blue agave spirit, which is tequila, but we can't call it tequila because it's not made in Mex Mexico, made here in Birmingham. Um, uh, blended whiskeys are straight bourbon, which was released in April of 2022. Um, the first bourbon released in Birmingham uh, or made in Birmingham since Prohibition. So um, kind of like liquid history is what I like to say. Um, and then our sherry finished rye. Um, I would say for me personally, my favorite product that we have on the clear spirit side is our gin, like John was alluding to. Um, it's not as juniper forward. It's definitely very botanical. It's got citrus, lemongrass, grapefruit. Um, so for the people who are non-gin drinkers, um, it's kind of the fun product for me to taste them on because they're like, no, I don't want to try the gin. I'm like, just give it a chance. It's going to taste different than any gin that you've ever had. Um, so people are always very surprised by that product in particular and really enjoy it. Um, and then our sherry finished rye is my favorite of the brown spirits. The sherry just adds like such a nice cherry flavor profile to the nose and to the palate. Um, but yeah, so our sherry finished rye actually won a gold medal at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition, which is awesome. And then our bourbon won a silver medal. So um, all of our products and John can, um, Josh can speak to this. Um, not only is the brand beautiful, which John um, played a huge role in um, creating all of that, but um, what goes inside the bottle mm -hmm. is also um, lots of time and attention and detail were taken into putting what is inside the bottle. So it's very high quality as well. So it should be in sales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to uh, 
Oh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the rye, yeah, definitely. Why not? Yeah, yeah. rye not. <laughs> I always think like I always Jesus think man. the uh, <laughs> I always think the uh, uh, distillery is kind of built up like this. Like I we I couldn't make if I make a delicious delicious whiskey or whatever it is. Like it doesn't really matter unless we have these guys to put something cool on it and tell people or tell the world about it. Yeah, that's true. It's Same thing if they put some make a cool bottle and then the stuff inside is terrible. Mm -hmm. You know. You kind of need both people in the fire on all cylinders, yeah. you know. So it's definitely a team, team effort. Work. Oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Which one do you want to try? Definitely want to try the rye because I'm a rye. I'm not the juice man. I'm yeah. a rye guy. Um, and I will say too, I feel like you know, uh, a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't like rye because it's too spicy." Um, our rye definitely still has the spice that a typical rye has, mm -hmm. but. Like I said, finishing it in that sherry cask kind of makes the flavor a little bit more mellow and complex. Um, so you'll get the heat, which I like, and people who typically drink rye like as well. Um, but it's a little bit more palatable for people who don't like just the straight spiced. Um, yeah, we're running 90 proof on the rye, so it's yeah. a little higher than your average, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and the the bill on the rye, it's it's a, it's a lot of rye. So it's a 95% rye. Really? Yeah, so it uh, rye is a spicier grain. You know, so when you put it in those, those sherry casks, it really, really kind of like, you know, mellows it out, makes it, makes it really nice. If you like a Manhattan. It's yeah. great in a Manhattan. I'll have it, yeah, absolutely. You guys drink Manhattans at all? This would be like, this yeah. would be the perfect spirit for that. Mm -hmm. I can personally attest to that. My yeah. whole family is uh, Manhattan drinkers. And <laughs> Christmas second, time. Second, yeah. third guest on the show tells us about how good Manhattan are and me and yeah. Matt over here. Like, I've never been a huge fan of them. I'm, I'm trying to get that. I'm get the much more of an old fashioned. Of course, I'd much rather just drink it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't need all that. But nothing fancy. I've got to figure out the, the Manhattan. Yeah. The trick is good vermouth, I think, is the most important part. And for me personally, is less. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not agree a big vermouth guy. And so that kind of makes mine, it just kind of. But you'll tinker with it, and everybody's different. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a bad Manhattan, and they'll put too much vermouth in it. I'm like, yeah, I don't want that. But if right. you get it just right, yeah. it's a great. Cocktail. What's the? Uh, there's like a trick to it. What's the uh, zip code or area code of Manhattan? Um, I think it's a three one three. There's like twelve. Is that? I think it's three ounces of booze. One two one two. I think is it two one two? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Clever. So, yeah. And then two dashes of bitters or oh, yeah. yeah. So huh. that's two, like, yeah. Well, that's actually right. Two parts whiskey. One part vermouth and two dashes of yeah. So two one two is a, that's why never, it's the Manhattan. I lived it's, there and I've never heard anybody <laughs> say that before. So two one two. You know the juice man. Yeah. 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 I guess uh, you know maybe you're earning your juice man. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've been working on this name for a little. Well, and hey, the more that you make, to be fair, the better like it tastes. That is true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is so, very good. Yeah. I mean that that sherry it does. Mm -hmm. It kind of gives it that sweetness a little bit. Yeah. You still got that full rye taste. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of a Angel's Envy was our inspiration for uh, the sort of finishing process. I just like what they I mean, a lot of other people have done that uh, subsequently. But I just feel like and getting into this, I was a relative neophyte when we started this whole process. And so kind of figuring out what do we want to do? What products do we want to try mm -hmm. to make or recreate or, you know, homages to? And I think that was just a it felt like to me that was a cool way to take one thing and then make it your own. You know, rye whiskey, there's not a dramatic number of different ways you can do that. But when you add the finishing process, you get to really kind of say, well, this is how, you know, we've done it. It's different. It's like your own little fingerprint on uh, a different, a, a product that people may have had. This is our, you know, mm -hmm. twist on that. So uh, that was kind of the motivation. Our original bourbon, we, we finished in rum casks, the Master Series 2, uh, was aged in cognac casks, so we we have tended to do things like that that make it a little bit more creative for us, and especially Josh starting. I mean, he's every day. It's like, hey, I have a new idea of some he's trying to you know, me too. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You a palate? The yeah. aged yes. agave. I forgot about yeah. that. That's finished yeah. in sherry casks. I got a, too, I got like so. a crazy unorthodox like idea for a, like uh, making a tequila. I think I told you about it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he told me he's like certified. Uh, for tasting tequilas, no, tequila it's like man, that could be like the perfect tequila next master. Don't don't yeah. mess around. Yeah. Yeah. He's got three point six million tequila bottles. Like yeah. 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 So, uh, you are the and that's just like largest tequila bar in the south. Okay, tequila is good. Yeah, he owns the largest tequila bar in the south. Really? Yes. Two hundred sixty. 
yeah, wow, we're going there, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. um, we've been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I can test Calusa <laughs> just to <laughs> hang out at yeah. uh, Jalapenos. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a great yeah. trip. You can go get some uh, good Spanish food and some good tequila. Yeah, right? the food's fantastic. Count me too, in. So. so what was the first spirit that y'all distilled? Was it a bourbon? Was it a whiskey? Technically, the first spirit that we distilled was vodka. Okay. And that was really because we made some adjustments to the still uh, so that and Josh and I were actually just talking about this earlier today, that we so that we can get to 190 proof in one distillation run. I mean, typically you get stills where you'll kind of do a, a stripping run and then a spirits run. So you can, you know get to the proof and you have to run the still two complete times. Our objective when we started was to make it so that we could go through that process in one very long, but just one running of the still. And so that was kind of where we started. Can we get to 190? Because the unusual thing about our still is it's really two stills. It's a pot still, which is traditional for making whiskey, and a column still, which is better for making high proof spirits, but still hard to get to 190 in one distillation. So we were kind of tinkering with things, and it was sort of a important technical detail. Could we actually, with the adjustments that we made, get to 190 in one distillation room. So that's kind of where we started. But um, the when we really started distilling, bourbon was what we started uh, paying more more attention to. So the gin is basically the same base as the vodka, just vapor infused with the herbs and botanicals. Um, so that was a similar enough process. Uh, and then the original whiskey that we had, we blended, we brought down from the distillery where we bought our equipment. So we had a whiskey for day one. Yeah. Um, and so we didn't distill that here initially. And so we got straight to putting barrels of, of bourbon back. So, and then as time went along, we developed the rum after that, I guess that was probably next after those. Um, and then we started putting rye barrels back. Uh, I guess we would have given the time frame. We must have started rye right around the same time we did bourbon, just kind of went in those two directions because we had to age those for so long. Uh, and then the agave came a little bit later, kind of once this space opened and people, you know, wanted margaritas, and, you know, so just such a popular, as you guys know, tequila has just been going off the charts over the last few years and so i think we were kind of on the seeing the front side of that growth and people were just asking for it, wanted to do something a little bit different and so we kind of jumped on that as well so now it's really about you know we have a single barrel which we didn't talk about which is essentially our bourbon we just uh, barrel it at cask strength uh, which is great it's, that that's probably it's not an everyday readily available product but it probably is my favorite thing that yeah, we put out because it's at 124 proof, except for maybe the aged agave, those would be close things, just because that's so, it's such an unusual product yeah. and really was just kind of a creative expression for yeah, us. Use on the truck. Um, maybe. So <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, kind of one thing after another. I feel like we never, never stop. We've done a couple contract things, which mm -hmm. all that keeps us busy too. So if we put on the table, all the different products that we made, even not under the Dread River banner, we wouldn't have room for our glasses. So <laughs> that's all. we've been busy. Very cool. Yeah, the Asia is really good. That's good. Oh, you never had them? I don't even know. Yeah. I mean, hopefully coming soon again. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. time. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. as soon as we can't shoot time. Yeah. That's why I found that extra bottle at home, so I'll let him try. Yeah. yeah. I'll be sure that was, he must be very special if he's willing to. Right. Yeah. So maybe. Some of he did say maybe. I have to call Keegan's dad to get aged agave. He uh, bought all of a, bought us out of that thing. Are you so serious? It's <laughs> definitely his favorite product. Yeah, which I, it makes me self-conscious sometimes because I'm like, do you not like anything else? <laughs> <laughs> no, just that's the you only really one you're willing to drink. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's. I think he does. It's just like it's such a different thing. It's just yeah. you know you can't you can't, you can't get, get it anywhere else. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a cool. Well, cool and I feel like everyone who tried it felt that way about mm -hmm. it which is why we sold out of it so quickly um because it was so unique yeah. you know people would you blind taste it against like a whiskey or a mm. bourbon and on the yeah. nose you couldn't tell that it was not one of those things yeah. Trick me, um, and crazy. so the fact that it was like people were like i can drink this and it's tequila but it tastes like mm -hmm. bourbon and i can put it in a old-fashioned essentially and um you know for the people who no, don't typically really drink that. bourbon and <laughs> like to drink tequila or people who want something different. It was just a really solid, interesting, yeah. complex product. Well, and like um, anything else, it's like a story. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you we tell you the story mm -hmm. and then you think the story is cool, then you tell your friends the story. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, the smallest quantity product that we probably ever produced mm -hmm. 
has the largest yeah. following and appreciation because it's just it's different it's yeah. got a unique story yeah. people remember that and they're like no it's not whiskey it's actually tequila and it's like yeah. wait what and now they're talking so i mean it's one of those funny things where you know when you start a business you're kind of like i don't know what things are gonna stick with people yeah. and what they're gonna sure. pay attention to and then that was like not an afterthought but it was just an experiment mm -hmm. we're just messing around like no eh, let's put this in here and let's put yeah. one of those over there and it came out great, and now everybody is everybody like, "Why did it. Why didn't you make a hundred yeah. barrels of this?" Like, well, because <laughs> we did three years, and I didn't know you were going to want it. Yeah. Well, so that's what got me started liking the Dread River because I'm still in King, and I tried the Blue Agave because I was trying to get all the tequilas. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was like, "It's okay, I don't really like it that much." You know, yeah. like you're saying, it's, I was talking to Josh. It's made with the Blue Agave syrup. Like, it's not the same as a tequila. Sure. Mm -hmm. I was like, but "Whatever." So then one of the reps was like, "Hey, try this. I got a little bit left. Mm -hmm. Try it out." Yeah, like, this is the best thing I ever had. How can I get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got in touch with Keegan. I was like, and the rest I taste of it. Yeah. yeah. Then I started trying everything else. Then maybe like you're saying, the blue guy. Like, I actually drank some last night straight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it was better than one I had yeah. a couple years yeah. ago. I tweaked sure. it some probably. Yeah. You know what like yeah. you're saying? Mm -hmm. But the, I guess it was a fresh bottle. It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But like like you said, that one bottle got me into. Well, let me check out the other stuff because exactly. that was really good. So it was your gateway bottle. Right. Mm -hmm. It was my gateway bottle. Right. Yeah. I like that. I'm gonna, that's the what we're going to call it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a name for it because there's no good like word for tequila made yeah. in America. But yeah. Maybe the, the, the gateway is what we're going to call it. I like but I mean, we released that. The funny thing about that even yeah. is we put that out around Halloween mm -hmm. just as like a, hey, come to the distillery. Yeah. We've got a new thing. You know, we're trying to keep mm -hmm. top of mind and make sure people are paying attention to everything that we're doing. And it was really to get people down here to come you the only place you can buy it is here you know at least that's what we anticipated um not really thinking all that much of it we do that every now and then throw yeah. in a, a mm -hmm. different product as if on cue i was just about to say you may talk about this yes. product yeah. that doesn't technically <laughs> exist yet yeah there is um, a killer label for this that we just got in like friday yeah where it's mystery yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, this is it's not aged agave yeah yeah this is a black strap rum uh what's, so what's you guys strap uh, black strap rum is like an old old style of rum. Like you can't find this style of rum anywhere yeah. besides here right now. <laughs> molasses. Right? Yeah, and this is something I've been wanting to yeah. make for a long time. Um, so we use black strap molasses and uh, uh, dark brown sugar to ferment out. We make a really nice like estery acidity like at, like acidity rum mm -hmm. uh, that just like has a great mouthfeel. It's killer uh, silver rum, and then we macerate in uh, some like cinnamon sticks. Uh, uh, star anise, a little bit of clove, um, some cardamom in there, and then uh, we put a little bit of blackstrap to back sweeten it as well. So that sounds amazing. Don't yeah. try <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, it's, it's like, like they're kind of coming after cracking a little bit because they're a little big. So we're gonna pour forks, you know. That's that's one of my new vices with rum. So yeah, me too. I've been kind of getting into rum. Open a rum bar. I will say, like, is that, is that probably open? one of the. Um, products that I've been asked about most mm -hmm. that we would have is some sort of either dark rum, aged mm -hmm. rum, um, or rum like this. And so I'm, oh, I'm personally really excited um, about this product. I think Josh did a beautiful job in making it. And the brand, um, as he was saying, the label, which um, John and Amy, who also does marketing and branding for us, have worked really hard on to keep cohesive with kind of the adventure series mm -hmm. theme. Um, you know, experimenting um, and trying creative new things um, is really what those two products are about, pushing the limits of the boundaries. And that's kind of why I brought up this with the uh, Aged Agave. That was our initial adventure series product, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a euphemistic way of saying, we like to try stuff and, you know, we'll see what happens. And I mean, so far, most of them have worked out great. Yeah. They may one day, they may not. Maybe, and try. that's part of the story too. Yeah, yeah. That not, not everything not does work out, perfect. and it takes you a lot of tinkering that. with the recipe yeah. and um, a lot of back end work to get the final product that you. Um, and batch taste, two but. may be different than batch one, right? Yeah. You know, and that's in this it's business. That's just kind of how it goes. I mean, that's not a lot of people. The big box brands, you know, have to keep everything very consistent for obvious reasons, but we're allowed to be a little bit more flexible and say, you know, we're going to try something different yeah. and this is, you know, this is how it was this time, this vintage, and, you know, next time might be a little bit different. And yeah. that's why you got to come down and get the one this year because you may never yeah. have a chance to get it again. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Yeah, the nose on this and then the flavors. 
Yeah, I love this room. It's uh, yeah. like this has been uh, in my head and never a reality for a long time. You know, oh, I got to get. Yeah, I've had this, uh, you know, this batch kind of planned out for a really long time. I finally got to make it happen. So when I first got here, there was uh, yeah, I, there was like some some grain on the floor, and then just enough for one batch of rum. <laughs> Um, you know, in storage. So not literally on the floor. Right, right? you swept it up yeah. and put it. Yeah, in. yeah. With the dog <laughs> hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I ran all the grain because, like, that takes priority. We got bourbon takes you know time to age, so let's get it on that in in barrels and in aging. Mm -hmm. And then I had a little swing in downtown, so I was like, finally, I can do like this <laughs> this recipe I've been like wanting to do for years. But uh, yeah, it turned out good. I like it a lot. So I think this will be huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just be amazing. Really sure. Um, like so like the aged agave is what, unless you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but, um, you'll definitely be able to get it in the distillery and then, um, also through the CGPO process, yeah, yeah. which I know you're familiar with as well. So, um, either the distillery or come to, directly to yeah, me yeah. and I can help you get it. Um, and then, um, if you want to carry it exclusively in Tuscaloosa, yes. so we might be able to, uh, you know. Make, we'll have competition. Yeah. <laughs> What's the price? Um, I don't think no we've yet. decided yet. No, no, um, we just got we just got the labels in. I don't yeah. know if you have a price yet on it. Yeah, no. I need the need the math, your math on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the other thing. Like Josh gets to go back there and tinker with stuff. And it's like, how much tinkering did you do? Yeah. <laughs> how much time? How much tinkering did that cost? Right. Yeah. He's like a slave for days. Yeah. Didn't sleep. I don't care about enslaving so much, yeah. but how much money did he pay? Yeah. Yeah. I was like making cocktails from my restaurant. I'll make one like this is fantastic. Yeah. And my partner's like, well, how much are we want to charge for? I'm like twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's like a twenty five dollars shot. Yeah. Yeah. I need to make something different. Right. Can you do it with Jose Cuervo? <laughs> I'll sit there. That's what my wife makes fun of me. I'll sit there at home, like with all this stuff out, making cocktails and like taste this, taste this. Yeah. They have like a Friday night tasting. We call it the double doozy in bourbon. Mm -hmm. Usually yeah. get drunk and get my daughter's boyfriend to bring us cookies. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. drives his golf cart over from the other neighborhood. Awesome. We just try different stuff. We need to start doing that. Yeah, yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely cool with me. Yeah. 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 Cookies. Uh, well, that was one of the cool things about starting this. When we first opened this space, you know, obviously. The limitation of only having these spirits, you know, you just outlined, like that's a huge part of what you do is taking all the stuff that you know and all the different things that you can include and making cocktails and getting experimental. And so we had to delete all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally everything. Yeah. So you have yeah. fresh juice, things that you can make yourself and the booze that we've created. Yeah. And so it's like develop a cocktail plan mm -hmm. and then not only do that, mm -hmm. but then make it so the cocktails are so good. People are like, at river well how have i never heard of this you know which you know you know what you're doing back there you could use anything and you could make it you know and, all, and when we first opened i mean that kind of set the tone for even the spirits people came in and tried the cocktails and were just like it was next level the guy that we had making cocktails was so creative and did a lot of really cool things that to this day i mean this has been you know 40 almost coming on five years later, people still come in and order by name the cocktails that they ordered off that first menu, which we haven't had you know, in years, <laughs> literally, but they remember that experience. And so it's funny, just like we were saying, the persistence of memory on those things mm -hmm. is like, I, you know what I remember about that place? I went there and I had the best cocktail and now their experience with anything, Dread River, all of the Dread River spirits is that positive experience. Mm -hmm. And so while like you guys, we feel like we can drink these on our own and that's our kind of objective is to make them so you can just sip them and enjoy them at any, at any point in any format, you start to then get into a bar program with mm -hmm. bartenders who really know what they're doing and then take these products that are a little bit unusual yeah. and now accentuate some of those things and all of a sudden you're doing doing really cool things with cocktails so we hope that we create the adventure portion of this but then you know you guys take it to the next level and say the only you know spirit i can think of that i can make this cocktail mm -hmm. with is this one because i play into it so that's like for you right with the age of god i never tried it in any cocktails because it's just so good by itself yeah and i only had few bottles i didn't want to waste it sure <laughs> crack a cocktail there and it like, it'll mess it up yeah. right yeah yeah that i tried to recreate a cool mezcal cocktail with that product but it wasn't quite didn't quite give me the smokiness yeah. that the mm -hmm. mezcal had mm -hmm. um and so then yeah then i decided to just stop doing that so as a bartender <laughs> somewhere else made a cocktail with y'all's product and then you brought it in house 
question. That's unusual, right? Typically, because they throw in stuff we can't use. You can't, and yeah. so like a lot of times. But that's fun too because we get very creative here. And I mean, you come in and have cocktails anytime you want. Sam, our beverage director now, bar manager, does awesome stuff She's with all of these spirits. I mean, <laughs> yes, really, and we'll do wizard. events yeah, and stuff sure. where people will ask us like, oh, how, what's the best way to express this cocktail? And she'll come up with all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. different. And she's very, very talented. Um, but it kind of really only goes in that one direction. Right. Because if a, and it's, con I mean, anybody who's in the bar would be like, oh, let me put whatever. Mm -hmm. And we can't use that stuff. Yeah. So she probably would say, all of her previous bar experience and even what she's going out there learning colors in what she does with this stuff. But that means, okay, I've got to go back into the kitchen and I've got to make a blueberry syrup to make it, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to be a lot more creative, creative here. Very creative. Yeah. And, and understand, yeah. and that's the cool, so our original beverage director, every chef who's ever worked here, because obviously that's a very similar skill, they under Sam, of course, understand the flavors that go into these things. It's not so much that I have to have these ingredients in order to make these things. The finished product tastes like this and I can get you there by doing different things. And so you can get to a Manhattan in a lot of different ways as long as you understand, here's what I'm balancing you know, with these different ingredients. And so it kind of almost, the limitation of not having all those other things has kind of been a, a great opportunity for us to say, we're going to get into the manufacturing process of this too. All the cocktails here are bespoke. We, you can really only get them here in a way because we're making them 100% in-house. We yeah, don't go sure. and buy anything else. So even the manufacturing part of this process extends to the cocktail making portion because we make it all you know, by hand. That's cool. So, Y'all could steal my pinchy pina one. Just yeah. got Jack River <laughs> rum and pineapple juice. And Mix. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. happy to that. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're big Coco Lopez fans here. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Was, it's been, it's been a big hit in Jalapeno. So <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves it. I was going to say, I'm, I make a mean pina colada with that rum, but I think it's mostly the Coco Lopez. <laughs> 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 Makes it so damn good. Yeah, what's, what's funny is the <laughs> yeah. Spanish level, but pinche pina means fucking pineapple. <laughs> that's, that's what it translates <laughs> to. Might, yeah, we might have to steal that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like We've been sprinkling yeah, sure. a little bit more edge into our brand. That's like, a great yeah. new though. Adventure Series name right there. Yeah. Yeah. there you yeah. Yeah. Borrow that. That's why I like, I like putting little Easter eggs in our sure. menu that yeah. nobody really knows. But if you know, you know. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> we did that with our, we did a little Christmas intro to all our staff members. And one of the uh, questions was, what's your favorite curse word? Which I wasn't sure about at the beginning. Because I was like, do we want, you know, I bleeped them out, of course. Yeah. But, right. I was, but I was like, you know what, we're a distillery. We're 21 and, you know, yeah. 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 So People curse. I don't care. I'm getting from New York to here. It's yeah. like, people are too polite. It's like, That's what we say about our podcast. Yeah. 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 Some people like, I want you to like it, but you'll cuss a little too much. I'm like, don't watch it. Yeah, right. <laughs> You don't cuss enough. Yeah. yeah. You're never going to Well, it's going to be when you come on. There's no rules. Talk about whatever you want yeah. to. Yeah. It's funny. We like to get a little controversial. Get some political guys from Tuscaloosa there and poke yeah. them a little bit. All right. I don't think Nick Saban's that great. I'm just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you lying, John? What's your collegiate? Uh, you know what? I don't really watch a lot of college football. So, so he's like new. He so just like moved here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, good answer. I'm going to say UAB. That's right? yeah. yeah. UAB. Yeah. Believe it or not, I asked that question on our thing. He, his answer was like, uh, I don't really watch college football and I'm not from here. So Alabama, I guess. Yeah. So what do you do on like, Saturday? Damn it. Man. I mean, I like to, you know, I like to be outside. <laughs> To be outside running still on Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an Alabama conversation. Yeah. So what yeah. do you do? So what's your favorite spirit? My favorite spirit is to definitely make. the black shrimp rum. Really? Oh, to make just in general, I like making whiskey. Do you? Yeah, I've been like fine tuning my rum because it's like my my like mistress yeah, yeah. kind of thing. You know? <laughs> but uh, um, I think my my favorite to make on a daily basis is definitely like the whiskey. You know. And when's the rum gonna come out? You say it's like next week, hopefully, man. Yeah, we're waiting. Uh, I yeah, think we're just waiting on labels to be printed, yeah. and so that tends to be a. We got them in house. Much more complicated. We just got to put them on the bottle. Oh, well, That's all we got to do. Yeah. Tomorrow then. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon, GPA exactly. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I will. I know a guy that works in the distillery. Sure. Might be able to set you up. Yeah. One, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get me to come over here, do stuff for y'all. Oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we just a little bit of that. I think taste. it does pour out of there. It doesn't look like it will. Okay, it does. It does. Yeah, yeah that's it does. for the tastings. It's just a little bit more accurate. I definitely have had slower. experiences where I've poured way too much without the help of those things. Well, yeah. So it's just like all of a sudden, I'm giving you a taste. Oh, you know what? It's a full on. <laughs> well, and I did that. I realized that when I, this is actually a good example. I poured you the rye before and I just kind of, you know, glug, 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 get in there. Yeah. And I was like, that might've been too much for, yeah. you know, perfect yeah. lunchtime <laughs> podcast <laughs> meeting. Yeah. And then I scaled it back on the yeah. second one. Cause I was like, I don't want to, I'm not giving yeah. these guys like full shots. That's what usually happens. Like we uh, drink on our double Tuesday Fridays, we drink out of these, but I got some new glasses. Yeah. yeah. So I gave my buddy, what was it? I think it was like a Willet eight, nine, mm -hmm. ten year. Right. And he just poured like two inches of like, oh, dude. <laughs> he's like, I'm sorry. I don't like these. He's, he's like, I'm sorry. I thought it was a good glass. I'm like, sorry. Very short. <laughs> but he drank it all, right? Yeah. He didn't waste it. Right? Yeah. That smell is incredible. It well, is. and a lot of times we'll, I mean, we do tastings out in the world and, you know, people are just curious and you want to try it. And if you mm -hmm. pour them too much and they're, you know, think it's yeah. fire water and yeah, they yeah. dump it in the sink, we're like, yeah. you know, I can always pour you more. You're yeah, always that's what I say. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's a taste. Um, but right? I don't want you to pour it down the yeah, drain. Yeah, I actually would prefer, like, it. if somebody really didn't like it, they just spit it out. Just let me know. Yeah. 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 Just spit it all over the floor, whatever, yeah. you know. Be dramatic. I love that. Right. I want to know a real, like sure. a real yeah. review. Tell me how you really did. Yeah. <laughs> that smell is absolutely mm. incredible in here. Yeah. yeah. You have to worry and about the taste. That yeah, exactly. It's, it's very it. smooth. It's 80 proof. 80, I was about to say yeah, 80, 80 proof. Yeah, sir. Yeah. yeah, 80 proof. Yep. It gets you in trouble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we give our uh, spent grain to uh, an old farmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said the cows will like run you over for our grain, you know, because it's like <laughs> they love spent grain. And uh, I gave him one of our one of our black strap rum bottles. Yeah. And it turns out he's like highly diabetic, mm -hmm. so that was a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually it worked. Killed him. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So if you guys need grain, we're looking yeah. for a new guy. Plot twist: he gives it to his neighbor, you know, and uh, and she's also like the same age group, mm -hmm. been around for a while. And she loves it, you know. So she loves it. She said she hasn't seen or heard something like this for you know decades. So. Is she single? And he is he single? Is she single? I didn't. I didn't get too in depth on that. <laughs> so, We're I don't know. Trying to remember sponsoring to meet you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was good. If you can get a good review from a someone who's uh, tried a lot of different spirits, yeah, know, is older, and mm -hmm. so I think that's a cool. I like my, yeah. you know. So Ooh, I am <laughs> I'm gonna abstain from this conversation. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, speaking of the pirate thing, Josh sent the first draft of the back of the label language, mm -hmm. and it was written by Jack Sparrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to, I tried you to, had to a couple of combine yeah. it with English yeah. a little bit yeah. so it was just everybody all knew pirate jargon. exactly oh what was going on. So I had to Google pirate. a couple things. I was not sure yeah. what some of the pirates. I was like, Timber. I said to a big smile on my face. I was like, John's never going to be something else. I tried. But at least it puts it in the right direction. Yeah. I had to get back Word. into my uh, Blackbeard days. Yeah, so. I was like, at least you understand. Fully owned it. Yeah. Do you ever if feel you like you're too much of the rum, it's going to make you speak like Sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there a time that I don't? Um, <laughs> no, well, and that's, yeah, that's kind of a funny question. I mean, I say that now, and it's kind of funny to look back on this because I was certainly the, the baby right. in the beginning of this process. Mm -hmm. At least that was the perception of me. Um, and as far as knowledge of this business or any other business for that matter, you know, I was learning on the job. I mean, we were definitely building this thing while we were flying it and um, got to the point pretty quickly where people are looking at me to answer questions. And I mean, I, I have no backup in this. I don't have experience to back me up, so I got to figure it all out. Uh, and it is funny now to kind of think about how much that has changed. And it, it's, you know, I would say it comes easier now just because of that experience. Yeah. But also, I remember not too long after we opened, we had a little panel here where uh, it was like an entrepreneurship panel, which we do you know, events all the time. And our architect group set it up and they're over the time, they're checking in all the time. We've got this thing on Friday, we're doing it, it's this time, it's these people. And you know, like any other thing, I'm just like, sounds good. You know, you guys just let us know what you need from me. And they're here and they're setting it up and it's happening right there. And there's like four bar stools set up. And, and I finally asked the one girl, I was like, so who's on the entrepreneurship panel? And she looked at me and was like, 
you are. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell do I know about entrepreneurship? And she's like, well, you built this whole business. And I was like, wait a minute, my life has now changed in a, a lot of ways. So, I mean, I do kind of feel like the old guy around here now and from an experience standpoint, but um, I think we, Jeff and I have always really tried to make sure that people, we, we find the right people who are passionate, I think, first and foremost. Yes. We didn't have the experience in this either, so that isn't mm -hmm. always the most important thing. But people who are going to, you know, walk through the wall and, and make it happen one way or another. And so I think I try to encourage that as much as I can. And I, and I say that only to color in that it doesn't ever feel like babysitting. I don't, and I think I, you guys don't make disagree. I can walk away if you want to be honest. <laughs> I don't, I try not to like, definitely not micromanage, but even then it's more like, if you need me, call me, I'm happy to help and answer any questions you know, right. that you may have that I can provide color to. But it's important for me to let you do it how you want to do it. Cause I, I think agree. that will motivate you to explore more. That will make you be more creative. That will make you be more excited about what you're doing. Uh, whereas if I'm, you know, dictating everything that you yeah, do and every move you make and looking over your shoulder all the time, that's just, nobody really likes to work in that environment. Yeah. And yeah. at least I try not to, you know, approach it that um, way. So that's my favorite freedom. thing about working here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have the freedom to try and fail, yeah. um, which I think is really important yeah. for allowing yourself, especially speaking for myself as being young and, um, in the role that I am currently in the fact that they allowed me the opportunity to step into a position like this um, with not really a ton of prior sales experience um, and trusted that I was going to be able to do the job. And if I didn't know how to do something, I have the confidence to come to John and ask him questions or go to Josh and ask him questions about how a certain product is made or, hey, somebody asked me this question during a tasting, but I don't know where we get our grain from. Or, um, you know, hey, John, can you explain to me a little bit more about this part of our story and the brand and why you decided to use this symbol and this thing and um, they he has really done a wonderful job of um, leading in that way um, giving the employees the confidence to go out there and um, you know try things and do things differently and some things work and some things don't but that's okay at the end of the day we'll just reevaluate and um, do it differently but you don't know until you try so um, I say the the team element is definitely wonderful and part of the reason why I wanted to work for Dread River is because I believed in the people and I believed in the brand even more so than obviously the product is great and that will speak for itself ultimately when you yeah. try it, you either like it or you don't like it. Um, but the heart behind it and the mission behind um, the brand really is what drew me to the to the product and to the company. Um, and when I go out there and I do my job, that's what I hope translates through. That's well. Sure. Well, you got me selling. Yeah. Seems like it does. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially now with the addition of Josh adding yes. new element to it and elevating you to another. He said you need your own tequila. No, yeah, yeah, that's where we're going. He's trying to honey dick me into it. Yeah, like sure, you need more new. Arm yeah. <laughs> That'd be what two seventy? Yeah. How many you got? Two sixty three. Two sixty six. Well, that's the, if yeah. you were ever getting close, we can just get you over yeah, the, you exactly. know, we can just make you in seven <laughs> yes. different versions. Like, ah, oh, somebody, yeah. you know, beat me on that. It's like, oh, don't worry about it. We've got your yeah. peppermint, we have your uh, jalapeno yeah. vodka. Yeah. I'm like, I think it'd be a whole different episode. Like I was telling him, ABC just changed the law without telling mm -hmm. nobody. So me as a restaurant, I can only sell you a 375 to go. I can't, I can't sell this. I can't sell leader anymore. Really? It's out of the blue. They, they called me, hey, that Don Julio barrel you're selling, you can't sell it no more. I'm like, oh my why not? They're like, we changed the law. Oh, thanks. But luckily, it only had like. Can four I sell bottles. the rest of this? No. Luckily, it had like four bottles left. Yeah. I was like, really? Because we were gonna go down to Mexico, pick some tequila, sell you know barrel picks, but can't do that no more. That's crazy. I can buy and sell it in cocktails, but I can't sell it in bottle. bottles. Bottles. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. kind of sucks. Like you do. Yeah. If you need like a DSP like, down there, yeah. that would solve that. So we're, yeah. we're trying to fight it with Montgomery now. Yeah, they just, they're there's they're no sure. there's no sense. Yeah. You can go to a package store and buy three kegs of beer, come to Halloween and say we'll be bottled. You, you can, can do like a two for one. Yeah. You can come here and buy six <laughs> bottles, yeah. and you can go to the ABC and buy them. Yeah, so. you can't. You can't yeah. do two. You can only do three seventy-five per customer for twenty-four hours. Really? Yes. What if I get somebody with them? Yeah. That's yeah. Well, <laughs> what if they have a bus over Yeah, hold on. Yeah. 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 Party yeah. bus on one Friday. To <laughs> everyone goes through the that line. That happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, I can do the, the Stiller series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. A great Master Series. Yeah, Master Series. There you go. Yeah. 
great master yeah. series. Master tequila. Yeah, exactly. Like short yeah. Yeah. ombre. I don't yeah. know what they're uh-huh. called. That, but come hang out up here for a week. And yeah, we'll, we'll make some something. killer agave fermentation. I you feel know? like with both of y'all's brains, you'd come up with something oh, so. that was pretty unique and creative. Yeah. Uh, and interesting. That's why we're, we're all one or the other. Yeah, yeah exactly. true. <laughs> I always get super jealous of, yeah. the, of like the beer guys because they can just make like a uh, pepperoni pizza beer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and it's like, and like, dude, we can't do that. It's like a five thousand. I got five thousand liters of that pepperoni yeah, pizza beer. You know, so yeah. stakes are high. For better, yeah. better move it. Yeah. So. so on the beer side, did y'all start doing beer just to sell? Yeah, for the, we, don't, a beer? we don't bottle it or can it or anything like mm-hmm. that we only sell it here um and again that was really more of an well my business partner home brewed prior to starting this and so he always kind of i think understood the beer uh chemistry part of that and was probably what led to him you know paying more attention to the distilling side i think he's a bigger fan of you know whiskey and bourbon um but beer kind of dips people's toe into right. the chemistry part of this and so I think that's kind of where that started. And so beer was always going to be a part of this. But then as we learned about the business, in being a manufacturer in the state of Alabama, you are a brewery and a distillery and a winery. So like all the breweries are technically also distilleries by law. There's some TTB regulations that are different. But in going through that process, we were a brewery. And so it was like, well, then I guess we'll just go through that process because we couldn't go and buy Budweiser or yeah. whatever, um, even the local beer, we couldn't do that. We, I'm sure, technically speaking, there would be some way to like buy it from them as wort and okay. bring it over here mm-hmm. and do you know whatever. But White like at that point, it's yeah. like what you know, that just doesn't make a lot of sense. So we have a small system; it's a three-barrel system. So relative to the breweries, I mean, it's tiny compared to what they do. But we are kind of inverted to them. They yeah. often have little tabletop stills or something where they kind of make small amounts of distilled spirits and then they primarily do beer we're the other way around so we only serve it here but the cool thing is kind of like josh's point when they want to try out pepperoni pizza beer (laughs) we have a small enough system where they're like hey let me go see if i can actually you know and i'm not really spending all that much i'm not really Mm -hmm. doing all that much there and we'll try a different fruit in this seltzer when the weather's nice and we'll do that and when that runs out it's gone we'll move Mm -hmm. on to something else so in keeping with our kind of attitude, it's, it allows us to be very flexible and kind of creative and say, you know, yeah, this is a cool thing I've been hearing a lot about, or let's try to do one of those things and yeah. we can just be, be creative. But given that we only have six beer uh, taps at any given time, as you create more and more popular products, it yeah. gets harder and harder to pull yeah. one of them off. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is just sort of the, the double edge of the sort of making good things is people come in and they expect to be able to get that thing and if it goes out of season and you don't have it and you know so um, you gotta yeah you gotta lean into the adventure you know and and having you know different things at any time so appreciate it while you have it (laughs) is the beer process is it different or yes much much different is it really yeah for sure so they do uh a lot of the brewery got well i mean we use a brewery extract here to make our beer but a lot of times when you're using a you know hops and things like that mm-hmm. uh they they do like the lauder um so they separate all the grain from you know from the wash and so it's a we do on grain fermentation here so all we're doing is cooking our corn and then we transfer it in we throw our yeast in and we're like all right it's time to go home you know whereas the beer guys are cooking everything in the pot and they got to separate it all out you know and then they do their fermentation there and then they can just kill it right in the tank and it's time to keg kind of you know from a person so, who knows nothing really about that, uh, the beer making process, I know slightly more about the distilling process. Beer actually seems, it might even be harder than distilled spirits. Right. And I say that primarily because at where, the level of alcohol that they're creating, like beer can go bad. I have personally, and I won't say whom, but I have the only time I've ever had food poisoning in my life, knock on wood, has been from beer at a local brewery. And I mean, I felt horrible and was flying internationally the next day so thanks a lot (laughs) um but it can be very bad that can that has happened it happened to me i'm sure it's happened to other people um in the distilled spirits world that doesn't that's not really a byproduct so Mm -hmm. we're killing anything that might you know cause problems anyway and then here we'll take that heads that we aren't using for alcohol and we'll spray down our brewing equipment and you know kill it too so yeah uh, i think part of that 
the the chemistry is a little bit more on a knife edge for them you know we're proofing distilling everything to such high proof it's a little bit less you know it's not gonna make anybody sick it might not be good but it's not you don't have to worry about that whereas they if they don't get it exactly right it can you know have some nasty results plus their stuff smells worse than ours i think our it's the distilling process yeah. smells good yeah, yeah. 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 it's just a bakery dude I don't, it is. I don't like it <laughs> yeah. Maybe, i'm sure they love it but i don't really like it. yeah unless you're throwing hops in there yeah so it's well. like cheech and chong around the corner you know if they put hops in there it's just real strong and very that's your jam yeah. that's that when they leave it outside of the sun it does not yeah. No. oh yeah after that's the thing about brewing uh, brewing is is uh contamination like the yeast and a bacterial infection stuff like that if you're not like really clean i'm talking gloves and yeah you know uh anything gets in there it just it can bacterial growth can happen so quickly and, and just ruin the beer mm. you know so for us like our yeast is especially designed to to if you're doing grain for example it just it it just jumps in there and multiplies and starts fermenting so fast that it leaves no room for growth mm. you know so we don't have to worry about bacterial in our fermentations and stuff of that nature whereas like that's kind of the whole name of the game in the brewery yeah you know like i just watched will the head brewer or the contract brewer that we use uh dry hop yesterday and uh he's got it like in the pressurized tank you know he's got his gloves on and he's got like his hair back and everything he's real clean with it yeah he like sprays everything down with alcohol he opens the, opens the lid and it's like cleaning the lid i'm like this is insane dude you know meanwhile you got the juice man <laughs> exactly. yeah. meanwhile i'm walking around just sprinkling grain off my shirt everywhere i go two totally different styles of people yeah you know? so it's yeah. like but yeah. Josh wasn't destined to be a brewer. Yeah, no, that's the yeah, moral of that story. Yeah, juice, <laughs> it's not my style of juice. Yeah, that's true. Anything else you want to plug before we wrap it up? I think we've covered all of our wares. We've hawked all our wares on uh, on the podcast. At least everything that I can think <laughs> of. Very impressive. Plenty to try. Yes. So, and we'll get more. Get on that tequila game. Try this round one more time. Okay. Keep going as much as. <laughs> Yeah, there's no way you guys are allowed to leave without trying the master series though. Oh, okay. Have maybe, you, let me you, cork this back up then. Obviously, maybe this one. Josh, tell them no about the master series. series. Yes. I think this is uh, probably the most innovative thing, you know, in the South right now. Uh, well, I, got, I, I got a couple of bottles I went home. Yeah, it's good. Went and bought a bottle, and I went back and bought another one. And my buddy went with me and we bought another one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice. it's great. I mean, it's. It's a bourbon that we age it in, a, in a, a French cognac barrel. So don't think cognac like wine. Like it's, it's made in the cognac region of France. That's where mm -hmm. these barrels come from. So French oak cognac barrels. And you can only get it in this one part of the world where this wood is, you know, it's where it's grown at. So, and the, the company that makes these barrels, they make all the Remy barrels and all like the best cognac brands. Mm -hmm. They use Donneroo Tonnelier. So that's the brand they use and that's who we got. So. Mm -hmm. These are really special barrels. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's 106 proof, um, aged for a little over two years. Yep. yep. And we did this, so we had a, a guy who was retiring from the Air Force come in and request to do a program called SkillBridge, which is sort of for retiring uh, military members to make their transition into civilian life a little bit easier. And he wanted to learn how to distill. And so brought him in and kind of showing him the ropes, Josh, kind of used him back there as an assistant distiller. And uh, we had done our original master series and thought that since he was a master sergeant, it just kind of made sense to have him kind of as his one career ends and he starts his new career and kind of highlighting for Veterans Day what all he did. His job was a combat controller in the Air Force, which is essentially the special forces of the Air Force. They're uh, roughly equivalent to Navy SEALs, Green Berets, Delta Force, things like that. And so that's who they attach to served you know on eight deployments had a 20-year career we just had his retirement ceremony mm -hmm. on friday here at the distillery so uh he officially retired from the air force which is a you know cool culmination kind of moment and so it just made made a lot of sense we thought to try to recognize you know he's new in the distilling world but has a a lot of really valuable experience not only uh from a career standpoint but from an american and patriotic standpoint he did a lot for us and so one little thing we could try to do to repay him for his service so it was a cool story and that's yeah, as we cool. talked about sort of with the master series yeah. thing joking with you 
But oh, like the master, well, <laughs> I say that because the master in the master series yeah, yeah. could be a master of any number of things. Oh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't necessarily have to be with respect oh, to yeah, distilling. Yeah. And so this person was a, a master of the military arts. Mm -hmm. And so That's that cool. made perfect awesome. sense. And so the next time we do that, it may be with a master of, you know, something totally unrelated oh, to what we do. Yeah, I exactly. Even, I don't even want my name on the bottle. I'm just uh, hang out. <laughs> it's like a master baiter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, so. I haven't done that one yet. <laughs> Mike running into some trouble with TCU. Someone has that. Someone has that. Josh is like, sitting on I've been <laughs> for the eight months while I've worked here. I had one, I had one going, but he beat me too. Yeah. Oh, me too. Maybe in time for the election, we'll do. There you go. That's <laughs> smart. Yeah. I got to show you our election stuff. We just, I made last night. Nice. Mm. Booze and bullshit in 24. That's right. I love it. Oh, That's what I was it. It's a lot of bullshit. Yeah. We can talk about, we were talking about earlier about the entrepreneur thing, maybe think. We got roped in. I don't know how we're hosting a pack committee in Tuscaloosa. They want Boozy Spirits to host it. Nice. Oh, nice. I was like, really? really? I don't know. If, like, <laughs> they love our show. They want us to host it. Oh, good. Nice. They're like, we're going to sell high dollar tickets, have all these high dollar bourbons, you know, raffles and race bikes. need a new Red River? <laughs> sure. We're going to get some black strap rum. Yeah. 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 Shows on I was like, how are we going to host that? Yeah. Well, oh, we, got this, <laughs> we have people come in. I mean, obviously, given the venue, people come in and want to do political stuff all the time. And like, I, I feel like I always have to be careful. Like, yeah. I don't want to say no on political right. grounds, but I also don't necessarily want to say yes. certainly yes on political yeah. grounds. But yeah. just in yeah. general, it's like yeah, you, right. you, especially nowadays, you have to be so careful mm -hmm. when it comes to stuff like that, mm -hmm. because, you know, by allowing someone to come in and pay money to use your venue, yeah. you've now somehow made a statement that yeah. you weren't necessarily yeah, exactly. intending to make. Yeah. So it's like. We can't completely not be a part of that because it's a you know business decision. But at the same time, it's a, it's hard. I just wish we could get back to like this is this should be sort of you yeah. know politics yeah. and culture. It's like you sit around and you have conversations and you come to terms with thinking different things. It more maybe maybe more of this and and less yeah. of the you know. And we all agree on, the, on most stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no matter stuff. where we're at. Yeah. I mean, we're having a good that black strap's good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That might be its own party right there. Right. 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 Strap 2020. Yeah. It's a great right. piece to Jack Sparrow for the president. Barner's here. Yeah. yeah. We're I, not sitting there like. I don't know what that means. I'm not familiar with that term, yeah. but. Uh, we're, yes. having, we're not yeah. sitting there like, like Auburn, cut it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those well, people. Okay, cool. right. yeah. Not allowed. Yeah. Well, same with politics. Like, I voted for so and so. Okay, cool. I don't like him, but school. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. Uh, well, and as I've heard, my so as far as my Auburn experience goes and Tuscaloosa overlaps, um, I have heard that I am more welcome having this business in Birmingham than I would be if this business were from Tennessee, for example. Oh, yeah. so I, did not, I did not realize that. Yeah. I thought I was the ultimate enemy of not. the people in Tuscaloosa no. and only came to realize that. That's true. No, if you were from Tennessee, you would be even more, so. more loathed than you are now. So Texas might be the new Tennessee. At least I've got that. You know, yeah. There's some bars in Tuscaloosa that have nothing from Tennessee. Yeah, yeah oh, I know a couple of those. <laughs> <laughs> Can't that get a Jack and Coke? Yeah. He's like, yeah, Birmingham? Have, Birmingham? No. Okay, Birmingham's fine. Uh, Jack, no. Yeah. no. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the place that you would have set aside for Jack, though, if you give it to me. Yeah. Red River can be your new Jack Daniels. So. It's been part of my sales plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's our pitch in Tuscaloosa. We yeah. can't use Auburn, so we'll yeah. use not Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Where did you go to school? It doesn't matter. Don't yeah. worry about it. Not Tennessee. Don't worry what? About Tennessee. It. Go Tennessee. Yeah. Different orange. <laughs> You yeah. send Josh, he don't care either way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. He's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Our is so <laughs> neutral. Me, <laughs> Just taste it. Just follow yeah. me, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we got roped into doing that, but it should be fun. Yeah, well, good way, baby. Keep your head down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's what my so. wife's like. You need to get a suit. I'm like, I'm not wearing a suit. I don't wear suits. <laughs> Yeah. Off brand. Off brand. Yeah. They want us to do it. Exactly. That's a good point. Probably don't be controversial about that. Yeah, well. Weddings, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a suits are for court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a Republican pack. I was like, I'm going to go get me like a Biden Obama shirt wear. I mean, <laughs> they're the boss. Why not? Yeah. And That's by the way, you, the you yeah. didn't have to tell me that it was a Republican pack. Tuscaloosa pack <laughs> wanting to do a bourbon. Yeah. I, I put that together. Hey, 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 the mayor is Democratic. Is it in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, really? Well, so is, I mean, ours is. And he loved Red River. Yeah, nice. Yeah. He's very pro business, though. Yeah, Good. He, is. Mm -hmm. he is. That's great. Uh, I will abstain from that conversation as well. He so. actually texted me after he left, said, Where can I buy this? Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah. The, yeah. We had the whiskey. Drink whiskey. Send him our way. We're happy to uh, oblige him.